Okay. And um, where do you want to? What's uh? What's the? What's the? What's the game plan? So yeah, I got I got a you know selection of uh, the photos, pictures, and whatnot. Just kind of wanted to cover uh, you know Tartaria in a nutshell, kind of uh, you know general breakdown of it for you. Uh, some of the things that um, you mentioned, you know, like radium. Uh, yeah, there, there's so much to talk about, and we, let's just let's just start the show, and we'll talk about it. And um, and I want to. I want to I want to point out like the naysayers like there was no Tataria. Yes, yeah, it's that's, laughable. Yeah. It's laughable. It's laughable. Indeed, it's so stupid. Do you Indeed. watch my? Do you watch um um my lunch break? Um, I have not. No, is that is that one of your programs he, or? No, 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 no. He's uh he's in the uh, he's on the app. I just my lunch break on YouTube. Um, okay. he does what you do, just a different style. And uh, he he basically finds old buildings and looks up at the narrative on the old building. And he's based, these are written by AI. He's like showing you how it just makes no sense. And it's all and there's lots of good stuff. And he's found so he found some stuff in Wisconsin. Holy crap. Really? That's that's kind of Holy interesting. That's, crap. that's where I uh, that's where I reside. We're at in Wisconsin. So so go back. Um, if you go, go right there down. My lunch break. Yep. Got that um, right down uh, here. The, uh, just go to his last video, his last okay. video, right. and then uh, and then I'll tell you a couple before. But um, he's a good guy. I I can connect you to if you guys want to collaborate. Yeah, um, definitely. And he uh, is mind blowing, awesome. mind blowing stuff. Right, right up there with you. Awesome. Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, especially uh, Wisconsin videos definitely got me interested. Like I said, I'm he up found a the- he found a building that had griffins all the way around the top. Really, and yellow and blue. That's got to be okay. Milwaukee. What was awesome. it? Maybe it was Milwaukee. Yeah. And, and then he found some other stuff. And then there's some construction going on there where they found like some old shit below the resurfacing of the road. Just watch this last video. You're going to, you're oh, going to, yeah. it's a wrap. You'll, you'll fall in it and you'll never get out. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's, you know, the standard MO every time they dig up or, you know, resurface the roads, you constantly, like you can type in uh, YouTube, go on to YouTube and find, uh, type in like underground found and just insert random city. And good 75% of the time, you're going to find a local news video <clears throat> of them, you know, just, oh, you know, local construction crews just uncovered this massive underground brick complex. We think it was used for, you know, the prohibition, you know, all these gangsters were building these intricate red brick tunnels and intricate red brick undergrounds just for prohibition. It's all about prohibition and slave trading, all these tunnels, yep. all of the underground worlds. I used to think, yeah, you know what? I used to believe that, but now just the evidence is, is beyond, it's beyond any fathom of a doubt. Exactly. Now, when did the reset happen? We can talk about that all day long. Who did yes. it? How did it happen? Why did it happen? Is that how many times it happened? We'll talk about that. But it happened. Exactly. And I, my guess is uh, 1843. 1843? That's a good guess. I just guess. threw that number out. I yeah. pulled it out of my career. That's, that's my, uh, my best estimation is between like 1850s, like early 1900. It, there's just regardless of the exact time because you know there's tons of evidence that the dates the you know years we have no actual fathomable idea what year it is so we're just kind of going off of their numbers but yeah i'd say you know between the 1850s and early 1900s there is just such strangeness about and that that's really the best estimate that I've had. And a lot of others have came up with, with in regards to the exact time frame of the last reset. We think it happens every couple hundred years though. Jake, what do we have as far as power tools and transportation in the 1920s? 1920s. Um, well, they just invented the first power tool back in um, oh, like 1890, I believe. So before that, all these intricate structures, all these magnificent buildings that were being built in a year's time was done with horse and buggy, oxen yeah. and push cart. Um, 
you know, 1920, we just started rolling out with a gas powered vehicle. However, before that we had, you know, over 75% of New York running all electric prior, um, you know, electric vehicles were massive. And then all of a yeah. sudden, just like that, all gone. I was, I, I go to a, my little local diner that I go to uh, in the bathroom, they have these old pictures of New York of these construction workers working on these beams, you know, 40, 50 stories high. And I started looking at it just the other day at the buildings below them. This is like 1920. There's a massive city of, of all old world buildings there yeah. already. And that there's, it would take us a hundred years to build that right now. Oh, easily. Yeah. And, you and, they, at and it, all the buildings, yeah. all the buildings looked hundreds of years old. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just, that's the thing. When you look back at those older photos, the first ones that we have back in the early 1800s, you know, we're supposed to be seeing new construction for one, you'll see very, very little, if any construction photos and the construction photos you do see look very altered. Uh, they look like nothing you would see at a construction site, no clear level grounds, no sectioned off area. They have these big, massive buildings being built right on top of, you know, full size trees on leveled ground. I mean, if you've ever seen a construction site, you know, that's something you'll never see there. You'll see, you know, the first thing they do when they build something, they level out the surface. They put up those nice little metal fences all around. Mostly they put so in the roads first. <laughs> exactly. Mostly so you can't see what's uh, what they're undigging. Jake, that come on right up with this picture. Tell me, tell me about this picture. Is this the Washington Monument? That's the uh, that's the uh, Lincoln Memorial here. That's one. Lincoln, of my, that's what I meant. Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, that's one of my favorite pictures in D.C. Um, I mean, and when was this taken? Swampland. Ah, nineteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. I don't have the exact date on that, but and and when was the Lincoln Memorial allegedly built, according to the narrative? Let's find out here real quick. I mean. You don't just build this in the middle of a dirt field. Exactly. It looks like a muddy dirt field. And yeah. That's, that's exactly what you'll see with so much of these alleged construction. It looks like it was built in 1922 is when it was dedicated. So, and that's exactly what I said, you know, around mid 1800s, early 1900s, you just see a vast amount of undigging. You know, all of a sudden, you know, whether it's Rome or, you know, things like this, you just see people deciding to go on these digs to undig everything from Egypt, Rome. And then that's exactly what these type of scenes look. You got that whited so, out sky. Let me let me ask you a question. And I, I, I want to talk about the whited out sky in a second. So they say that the Lincoln Memorial was built in the 1920s, thereabouts. Is that mm -hmm. what the narrative says? Yep. And and. Was there anything else there or did they build it in the middle of a field? Essentially that just the middle of a field. Yeah. I mean, a muddy field in the middle of nowhere, it looks like, right? <laughs> no roads. Yeah. No roads. No, uh, I mean, no cranes, no <laughs> construction workers at all. And you see that with so much of uh, DC, I did a video way far back on DC. Um, let's see what I got saved here. Here's a, yeah, let me share you my screen if I can. Can. Okay. So here's another one. This is a Washington Monument being built. And I mean, just let's look at the kooky oddities here. You got this like last mark almost. And when you look at yeah. the Washington Monument now, you see that it has two tones in color. It starts off, um, you know, like this kind of darker marble color. And then they say they supposedly stopped for a while in construction of it. And then when they restarted, um, that's where the different coloring. But does this look like any construction site? I mean, like these little cranes, you actually see a couple of people working, weird barrels, rickety looking shacks, and this old old looking base i mean look at this base that it's built on top this looks like hundreds of years old this looks what like are you suggesting i think a lot of these cities i mean you know these brick masons you know there's a reason why the word founded 
think of it. We have yeah. founded cities. Buildings were not built yet founded on a date. Um, I'm down with that. Right they're, around, they're not founded, they're founded. Right around the same time, what do you have happening on? You have the orphan train, you have the orphan asylums. Um, what did they call those kids? They called them foundlings. These were yeah. found lands. These were found cities, cities that were abandoned and emptied for several decades, if you know, not centuries. If not centuries, right. And well, here's that, another like Lincoln Memorial. Like, look at this. This just does not look like a construction site. It's, you know, this is a little bit cleared right up here. But this is just an empty, abandoned field. Of course, you have the blurred out, whited skies. Can't have anyone seeing what's behind there. I have another really so, good example. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You're, moving, you're cranking along too fast. Sorry, go the, ahead. The, the Washington Monument, where's the rest of it? If, it? if it was there before, that's just the bottom part of it, right? Yes. Yeah, it's the bottom part of it. If you see a lot of pictures um, of what they call the conception of the Washington Monument, you actually see like this... Uh, this kind of whole section around it, almost kind of looking very similar to Stonehenge, like a little like a pavilion built around the whole center. Now they say that was just a conception, but I've came across so many pictures, you know, those like bird's eye views or depictions of cities from the 1800s, 1900s, showing the Washington Monument with that round rotunda down at the bottom. Um, yeah. So again, it seems like, you know, the mud flood happened, wiped out most of these buildings. And what we see here, like these older structures that are buried, like the main streets in any city in America, any city in the world, pretty much, you'll find these very strong mason built buildings that survive the flood, but they're several meters underground. And yep. same with the city roads. I mean, basically think of it this way. You have limited manpower, limited tools, limited resources, you're coming into these cities, you're not going to dig out the whole entire buildings, you're just going to, you know, second floor becomes the first floor, you're going to make it all as level as you can, call it a day, build a new door where the windows are. And you see that time and time again in these. And all That's these constructions, they just look very, yeah, yeah, I do here. Let's, um, some of the digging out pictures are just absolutely stunning yeah let me show you some of these uh, mud flood pictures you know, why, why are you pulling those up keep looking um the whited skies our skies are becoming whited all the time right now since there's nothing new under the sun maybe this whole spraying of the sky thing was happening even more so back then and when they get the skies to be totally white maybe that's when the reset happens that's a very good point here um i think that's in like airships air travel um celestial events you look back yep. in like a lot of old newspaper articles there's actually talks like the battle of nuremberg back in the 1600s yep. where they just woke up to these crafts in the sky fighting each other like a whole on space battle right in the sky um and that was far from but the only instance of that there was instances of flying ships um seen in the sky in Germany back in uh, the early 1700s, I believe. Um, and I mean, just when you think of the airships here, um, yeah, I think that is the reason why we have some of these most grand monuments, grand structures from hundreds and thousands of years ago in some of the most remote regions in the world. Places that yeah. would be near impossible even today with all of our infrastructure, all of our technology, supposed to be able to build something like that in such grand style and grand function, you know, middle of an island, middle of a mountainside, middle of, you know, nowhere. In the middle of the Amazon. Exactly. In the most remote, what inhospitable are, regions. That's where what are we, we looking at here? We're looking at the railroad tracks being excavated. Yes. So this is the supposed construction of the transcontinental railway. Um, and as you see, Again, very weird construction here. You have the muddy and dug out railroads. You have, you know, groups of controllers, the nice little well-dressed, well-off people here. And that's what you see with the actual pictures of the Transcontinental Railroad being built. 
like look at these these tracks are still underground basically and yeah. you look from where they dug up it's about a couple meters underground it's you know the same commonality you'll find in these pictures these are just the railroads i mean throughout in the old times especially i mean here's another picture um they're just digging out and you can see you know archways right here can you make that bigger yes i can Are you, yeah there you go I'll be beautiful there you, there go. you go i mean you can see just all this stone and brickwork right here several meters underground and this is a um this was a escape hatch built in 1500s for a uh, king can't quite remember the name off the top of my head but this was all made for one person they say several meters <laughs> underground as an escape hatch if any of that makes sense i mean just look at these these boys here compared to like the size of the archway yeah and again complete buried and looking almost melted brickwork this is in russia just did you, speaking of melted and petrification, did you see in uh, in uh, uh, Acapulco, the, you know, the crazy freak storm that they had, but they just let people back in the other day and somebody found a frog in mid leap that turned to stone. I have not seen that. That sounds very interesting. A petrified, a petrified frog. So whatever happened there happened instantaneously. Exactly right. And that's what we see with these mud fossils, these, you know, giants that once walked these lands, they were literal mountain sized. And people tell you, oh, that's not how petrification works, yada, yada. But no. what they tell us about pretty much everything in history, in the sciences, um, they, you know, they just put some extreme values to them that we can't verify ourselves. But then when we look at the evidence, you know, they, they were saying like, for example, dinosaurs, they were finding soft tissue remains on dinosaur bones, which if they were millions of years old, that should be absolutely impossible. And but was it you that showed the, was it a dictionary or something? It talked about dragons and how the nearly, it said nearly extinct, near yes. very yeah, very rare. And that was what year was that? Do you remember? That was a dictionary uh, from the 1700s. Let me see if I have that in this file. We're, we're going all over the place here, but that's yeah. okay. There's, hey, no, it's okay. It, that's a, it, that's the problem right. with this is it's, there's so much to I, go over. Why, while you're looking at that, you, you pointed out in your video that the Chinese Zodiac has 13 animals, 12 real animals and one fake one exactly does that make any sense not at all they actually had a dragon yeah. handler an official state dragon handler in china up until the 1700s um so i mean honestly it goes a lot deeper i mean there are far more evidence to suggest dragons are real than dinosaurs dinosaurs are just an invention that's why we can't see the actual bones, any bones that are displayed in museums are just composites. And they say, well, they have to be because uh, the radiation from the dinosaurs back then. Yeah. Would... The guy, the, the, there's a royal guy in the 1800s who theorized about dinosaurs. No one had ever found any evidence of dinosaurs in all of the pre-construction uh, as far as back as our fake history goes. Mm -hmm. And then a year later to the day after he published that, he, he and his team discovered the first dinosaur. Convenient. I'm sorry. Anybody that believes that is, you know, you are a yep. coincidence theorist and uh, you, you have given up your ability to think. Exactly. I mean, it's the same with Tartaria. So when you type in Tartaria here, what do you get? You get things like this. Let's see if you can pull this up on the camera. Well, can you see that definition from Google? I just, I just see your files. It's very small. You got to bring up images. It's going to be tough. Oh to yeah. See hang on. Like I'm that. sorry. I'm sorry. I, uh, I'm not sharing my actual screen. Give me just a second. Let me go back to my camera. Here, I'll I'll stop sharing you. There we go. Now you can reshare. Okay. Now you can reshare. Oh, there you go. All okay. right. So I got some printouts here. I thought this would make it a yep. little bit easier. So this it. is some of the in, uh, information you'll get from the mainstream if you type in Tartaria, saying it's just a placeholder. Um, 
blanket cartography. You see, you see that? Okay. Yep. Yep. So it's just a blanket term used by European cartographers to explain the vast regions in the East that they had no idea about. Despite that we had maps from 1500 all the way up until at least the 1860s. And I say at least the 1860s because we have this photo from the Atlas of the World at the I time, love it. the flags of all nations. And what do we see here? Tartaria yeah. right next to China. And this isn't just some, you know, willy nilly thing we got here. Mexico, we got Brazil right here. All of these countries. And you look at US right here. I don't know if you can see the stars quite so well. Yeah. I counted them all out. There are 34 stars on this US flag. Significance of that is when you go into the NPC's tool to Google, when did US have 80 or 34 stars? They had them in 1861. So when US was already a country for supposedly almost 100 years at that point, in 1861, Tartaria was still a <clears throat> represented nation of the world. Not yep. only was it a represented nation of the world, I'll show you some more. Here's a snippet from a newspaper article. The alphabets of the world. They had one of the largest alphabets. We have that documented. So right there, just those two pieces of documents disprove the mainstream, the Google narrative, that it was just a placeholder. Yeah. But there's, there's far more than just that. Not only was it a vast language. They had their own flags. They had the Great Wall of Tartaria, not the Great Wall of China. I don't know if you can see that here. I see it. The Great Wall of Tartaria. Great Wall of Tartary. Now, there's a reason why Marco Polo, who was famous explorer for you know exploring China and the Silk Roads, never talked about the Great Wall of China never once mentioned it in his travels. Now, when you pull up Marco Polo, interesting enough in Google, let's do that real quick here for you. Just a moment here. Why are you, why are you pulling that up? Yeah. The, the flag, the Tatarian flag has the Griffin on it. Explain what a Griffin is. Griffin is a, is it? a crypto creature um, that they say never existed, much like unicorns, dragons, um, blemmy, um, giants, etc. However, the griffin, much like giants, blemmies, unicorns, um, cynocephaly, have been talked about throughout this realm. Um, not just one culture, not just one civilization, not just one period of time. Um, yep. So again, you have causality it's not just one nation or a couple nations close by talking about giants or um griffins it's a whole worldwide mention of these creatures that we now call mythical beast okay so i love that picture too you got there going on yeah what what is going on there yes but again can we build anything close to that today that's the real question. Okay, so when you pull up Marco Polo, interesting yep. thing when you hit up Wikipedia. Do you see that flag, that owl right there? Are you there? sharing? Are you, do you have to share your screen again? Oh, hang on a sec. Let me get you back. Okay. Okay, so when you there pull you up Marco Polo here on Wikipedia, you see that flag right there, that little symbol. That's a Tartary yep. owl. Even says there. Polo wearing a Tartar outfit print from the 18th century. Weird considering he was born in 1254, but he's decked out in Tartarian attire. That's why you have no mention of the Great Wall of China. I theorize that China was once part of Tartaria and they broke off. That's why when you look at that flag of the nation that we had earlier, that's why their flags were so similar. Hang on, I can pull that back up a little bit uh, better here for you. You see that? You yep. got the China dragon, the Tartary dragon or griffin. 
I think there were one nation. I think Tartary went a lot further than just south or the eastern part of Asia. I think it was nearly worldwide. A lot of Alaskan um, natives can trace their you, origins to the Mongolians, for example. Do you think that Tataria or Tartary was a worldwide um, civilization or just large parts of the world? Large parts of the world. I think, you know, Tartaria is kind of used almost as a placeholder ourselves in the truther community to explain. Like Tartaria equals old world. Exactly. Anything. That's how I use it. Now I say old world because too many people get triggered. Tartaria, the old world. Some of it's Tartaria. Some of it's not. We're trying to figure it out, but there's no question. Look at these buildings. So insane. We're we're veterans of the uh, craft. We know how to speak and not trigger people. Yeah, that's why. If you look at a lot of my videos, I, you know, I'll allude to Tartaria, but I'll refrain from using that word specifically unless I'm actually, you know, bringing up documentation of Tartaria itself. Here again with the Great Wall of China, you will find most of the archer slits, most of the entranceways on the opposite side in the Russian territory or where Tartaria used to be. Now, Why would China make a great wall and make the archery slits facing the Chinese side? I mean, I know you can say, you know, communist China, they they like to uh, do some extreme things over there, but still. I think it was the builder. He had dyslexia and he screwed up. He's like, oh, dude, sorry. There you go. There you go. (laughs) And here's, here's another view kind of about the Tartarian nation and China. And that's where the border was. That's where the wall was. I mean, it makes perfect sense when you consider that. China Amazing. has had a large documented history of ripping off cultures, ripping off history, heritages, and just outright ripping off technology. They do it to us all the time. They take our technology and I mean, more power to them. They take our expensive to manufacture technology and find a way to make it cheaper and I mean, good for them, but that's that's their that's their whole path. That's what they've been doing. To think that it's in the realm of possibility for them to steal a wall, to steal heritage and cultures, I mean, that's really not that far of a stretch, even when you look at Tartar, uh, China and the mainstream narrative. I mean, as you can see, all these documentations of Tartaria, a Tartarian, a Tartar gentleman, these are all showing that it is far more than just a placeholder. Far more. It was a well-documented country. I mean, you don't have maps this detailed, correlated over hundreds of years. I think my oldest map of Tartaria goes back to 1400s. So that's, I mean, that's triple the, you know, history and established timeline of, you know, our our own government, the U.S. And that's why when I mean, our say- timeline is so stupid. It's like nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. And then in 150 years, we built everything. Yeah, the, we were riding in horse and carriage for 1500 years. And then yeah. all of a sudden, boom, now we're, we're flying to the moon and, you know, we're going around yeah. in space. You can't go, but we're doing it. You know, we're $50 million a day to do well, it. Event, but, you, you can know. go, you can go if you, if you put up some money, but it won't be for 10 years. Oh, yeah. Well, you see these, yeah. you know, high altitude um, adventures. I seen one the other day. It's like two hundred thousand dollars will get you, and they they say carefully, you know, a near space experience. They right. basically and take you, a high and, balloon up, and you eat dinner, and then they drop you back down. That's for two hundred thousand. Yeah, if if it ever happens, you're in a capsule with a curved window, like a submarine curved window. Yep. So you could not see anything but a curve. There's it's, no. No way. So I don't even think that's going to happen. But if it does, big deal. Exactly. This is uh, this yeah. is that 1400s map, I believe. I don't know the exact date, but this is, I believe, the one of the oldest maps I have of Tartaria. And you see, it's just wow. these, and this was in the 1500s. Just look at these massive cities, these castles, these just beautiful, beautiful architecture and just grand across the region. But it was just yeah. a placeholder. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, was it you that showed years ago? I want to let's let's shift a little bit of you if you're ready to yeah. uh, airships and uh, 
We talked about uh, radium. Yes. You know, and radium engines were you that showed the the rate they were doing uh, on a New York City building. They were um, something was wrong with an old elevator, and they opened it up, and there was a radium engine in there. Um, I think I had some. It's a mercury. Uh, what is it? A mercury. Called? Yeah, it was. Mercury, a, it was a crazy it, engine. Can pass or something. Yeah, that's actually how they charged uh, electric yeah. vehicles back in the day too. Uh, was with mercury, like these transistors or something. I'm, I'm killing the name of it exactly what it was, but yeah, it was like this big tube with mercury in it, and like the electric bolts would like kind of fling around it and stuff. Yeah, it's like a mercury arc refractor or something like that. I'm sure people are going to yell at me in the comments. I've over seen. It, I think it's mercury with magnets, and it spins around, and, and you had a little current to it. Yeah, I and, I forget. It's all fascinating. So the the question I had was um radium so we you look at all the fireplaces that were like they didn't use to burn wood in there they're using radium to heat you know to yep. heat i don't know if it's to heat and cool but is that the same radium that they make you test when you're buying a house to see if you have any radium in your cellar a radon i believe isn't it radon? is that the same thing as radon from radium i don't, I don't believe so no radon's a, def, uh, a separate thing yeah so okay, separate thing yeah but um, radium, you know, same with like lead paint. Um, there's a lot of benefits to lead paint, you know, blocking the EMF. The problem is when there's lead paint, like there's lead paint around, I get hungry and I just want to eat those lead chips. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So we need to get rid of the lead paint. It's just too exactly. tempting to eat those chips. <laughs> and that's the, that's the ex same exact mindset when you bring up topics like radium or something to people they instantly yeah. go to oh it's so deadly and radioactive and the radium girls it's funny we have these triggers like when you talk about airships the first thing yeah. the you know the well, some airships say, while we're talking yeah, yeah. definitely <laughs> so ahead. the first thing the mainstream masses will say is oh it's so ex dangerous it's explosive it'll go boom then they only can think of the hindenburg the hindenburg was the only yeah. explosion explosive disaster of airships and it was actually and, like the only disaster of a passenger airship and i think it, i think it was a complete and total false flag can you blow up make these pictures bigger when you're showing yes, them I yes i can yes i can there you so, go this is a uh, uss a akron um docking on the mooring stations installed on a lot of these naval ships so for something that was just you know a fad that didn't take off and it was so dangerous and explosive again much like tartaria why do we have so much common repeating instances of them? These airships, this is during the construction of the Empire State Building, where there was a mooring station built right on top. Now they say it was never used because it was too windy, but that was not the only mooring station that was built in a skyscraper at the time. Um, my own hometown, Chicago, the Medina, Medina Athletics Club, they had a mooring station, and they'll even say in the official Wikipedia, they had a mooring station built on top. Well, then they figured out again that it was too windy and dangerous, and it wasn't going to really work out, so they scraped it. And I mean, here's an image of the airship docking at the Empire State Building. They say this is just a, you know, a designed image to show off that the empire state building had a mooring station on it though it was never attempted well they said it they attempted it once but it was too windy and they gave up on it so you're going to build this massive skyscraper in a year's time just one of the most beautiful pieces around at the time and you're not going to think of those details when you design something like that we're just going to hope for the best just put a big giant mooring station on top let's hope it all works out guys this is, of course, DC airships flying in the background here. This is. But go back, go back to that DC picture. Those buildings look like super old. Old as heck. Yes, they do. And I mean, yeah. that's what you see when you see these pictures from the 1800s. I did a video on Australia, Melbourne, Sydney, um, showing it, you know, early 1800s, like the first pictures that we had from them. And everything you see is old weathered stone buildings muddy yeah. buried streets and it's amazing same thing do this you, is this is another reason why when everybody asks well why do they get rid of airships what's the point this is a um trip to a north uh a south pole exp 
expedition. Um, they had trips to the South Pole, trips to the North Pole, um, many, allow that. many explorations. And we, yeah, of course, we can't have that. Our fixed wing aircraft today struggle going to the North and South Pole because, you know, oh, it's too cold and uh, the extreme weathers. But airships, I have many, the Roma, the Norge, um, all taking these polar expositions and being able to explore deep into Antarctica, something that we can't do from the air today even. Show, show the images of the airships where you can show the inside because people think that only people are in those little cabins. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. They think cabins they, on the outside. It's like think, a cruise ship in there. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how much flying you have, but I would much prefer flying these things than anything else that we have today in these little sardine cans. Let's see what I have here. I got some more. Hang on a sec. Why are you looking that up? So I was reading about radium engines and the, do you know what the exhaust from a radium engine is? Water? Pretty much nothing, right? Helium. 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 Okay. So if you had a radium engine on an airship, you have a resupply of helium. A free energy device. Exactly. That's And I don't know, you know, the radium engine go forever, like a nuclear, you know, nuclear um, engine does. Pretty much. Yeah. I, I mean. That's that was the thing with radium. They had radium heaters. They had radium heating devices. Um, it radium condoms. Can you tell me about that? Radium rubbers. Yeah. I mean, where is you know <laughs> we had these um, radium girls that you know they were dying left and right. Bring up pictures apparently. while you're talking, please. Bring, you have so many pictures. Just there let's, we go. Let's here we go. Some of your pictures. Here's some of the interiors of the airships. Here, um, this was a uh, the LZ-130. I believe this was a Russian designed. No, this is a German design. But you can see the whole underneath of this airship is, you know, passenger spots, crew spots, cargo storage, etc. It was not just, you know, when they you had say like airships, cabins and restaurants and a, like a cruise ship. Exactly. They had outside seating areas where you could go and see. This was a design for a uh, a cargo carrier airship. Um this was uh, one of the trips, uh, German uh, documented a German uh, naval airship L-32 at the uh, North Pole or South Pole, rather, sorry. And another thing is Let's all these American airships that you see. Wait, go, they, they, they look like the external tank on the on the space shuttle. They do kind of. That, like that one right there. Yeah, well, that's those because the external, shaped... tank is, the external tank on the space shuttle is a blimp. For those of you that it. don't know, I believe it. Absolutely. Yeah. I see. I think I've seen your video on that covering that. Yeah. Absolutely. Think yep. of that. And just look at how, you know, simple logistics wise. And my, you know, professional career, I spent, you know, 10 plus years in logistics and freight transportation. And just thinking of an airship from a, you know, cargo standpoint, you can unload and load anywhere. All you need is a mooring station. You don't even need a mooring station. These guys are right up on the water. These are boats just docking right up onto the airship. Water rescues. Um, you know, there's many videos of them performing water rescues with airships. They were so easy. They could just drop boats right out of the airship and rescue this, the stranded ship. This is why they demonized helium. I mean, uh, hydrogen with the Hindenburg and everyone thinks, oh, hydrogen bombs. And, and yep. then uh, NASA controls all the helium. So there's, just enough for party balloons. Yeah, just enough yeah, for an occasional a football game. You know, a football game has a little good year blimp. They'll do that. But if you want to start up a you know a giant airship company, good luck getting the helium. Exactly, and that's exactly what happened with the Germans. All those uh, U.S. airships I showed you, like the Akron, the Macon, they were all German designed. Um, retributions from World War One, actually. The U.S. couldn't even design their own airships. Um, the Germans were miles and miles ahead of us in developing those things. Part of the reason why we held the helium from them. We didn't want those things in the sky from a military standpoint. It makes sense in that regards to demonize them because, you know, at the time we had nothing that we could defend against them. And now people say, oh, you know, they're, you know, they'd be so easy to shoot down from anti-air, et cetera. Another thing people don't understand, aside from just the lower cabins underneath these, 
is this is a rigid structure filled with helium bladders. So there's several different like giant size compartments yeah. with like filled bladders in these rigid metal frames. So you see here, so even if know, it gets damaged, it'll just gently land on the ground and people can get off of it. Exactly. I wouldn't say this is probably the most gentle landing, but again, anything yeah. from a big giant fireball to all oh, the humanity that you see from the Hindenburg show. Total fake. And I mean, look at this, this one, got knocked off where half of it came off and they were still able to land successfully and yep. anything i mean, just look at the massive size of these this is all lower cabins underneath here and some of the u.s airships and this is the detail of the uh one of those mooring stations just look at the technology that goes into one of those the u.s airships the ekron makeron and um i can't remember the other two but they actually had aircraft that would fly out of the lower belly. Uh, they'd have up to five scout crafts, you know, whole battalion, basically, um, that they could just release right from the air and dock back with the airship. They were floating aircraft carriers. And I Amazing. I almost think that some of some way that technology is still out there. You know, you, you think of uh, UFOs like the cigar, uh, cigar tic-tac-shaped tic -shaped UFOs. I mean, those are basically airships and you already have stealth mm. technology um, where, you know, our planes, for example, the military will admit to it where they have these 4K cameras all on the bottom of the on the plane and then on the top. So they take a pictures of the top of the sky and they transpose it to the bottom of the aircraft. The cameras are looking up, so you look up and all you see is sky. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a great, great uh, cloaking device, if you will. And that's what the government will proudly admit to us. And I always and, say and you got you got airship technology along with with electrostatic uh, levitation, if you will, uh, technology. And you, you have, you know, free energy. Uh, you can travel anywhere you want. Exactly. Probably don't need to refuel for, I don't know, years or ever. Pretty much, Tesla actually yeah. had some. Um, Tesla actually had some plans for them. Here's some of them outside uh, the aircraft coming out of the air aircraft carrier. Yeah, here. that gives you an idea how big it is. Look at those airplanes dropping out of it. Look like tiny little ants almost comparatively to yeah. it. Tesla actually had big plans with airships as well. He wanted to um, use them in his free ether electricity. Now I feel Tesla, whether you know. A lot of people say he didn't even exist. I'm not sure about that. Um, I feel he was almost a rediscoverer of a lot of this old world technology. More of more so than a secluded inventor that kept to himself, I feel I, he made breakthroughs, you know, researching the old I, world technology. I believe, and, and and a lot of people agree with this, a lot of people just can't fathom it, that People can, the, the thing that they call the Akashic Records, I call that the collective human consciousness. Yes. And people can connect to this stuff and build these things where they had no training, they had no idea, they're able to get the information. So perhaps Tesla was able to connect to, you know, that old world technology and re, you know, bring it out again for, for the world to use. And funny enough about that is Tesla actually talked about something about, um, you know, he would say, I think he'd call it like his mind palace or something where, yeah, I'd be able to connect with this collective human consciousness. Um, there's also talks of, you know, the fake Einstein, uh, being able to, oh my God, there's, well. um, I got to find the meme. There's a, there's a, there's a photo. It's like a hundred, um, Austrian scientists, um, against Einstein saying that he is leading the world into a place of made up math, you know, equations of nonsense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Einstein's so, just uh Einstein's just a uh latest in the long list of uh lies of our history. Yep. So let me ask you a question. Um, you know, we look at the old world's fairs and the number of people that got to San Francisco, it'd be hard to do that today with modern transportation and everything. Exactly. What do you think the world population used to be in the old world? Larger they than say it we have today. Eight, larger than today, like like today we have eight billion, they say. I think mm -hmm. it's actually less. I do too. Um, I've been throwing out the number of a hundred billion. 
It could very easily be. I mean, some of the most beautiful monuments to our ancient past are, for one, not even found yet, but the ones that we have found are in some of the most remote regions in the world yep. or meters underwater. So yep. how did they get built underwater? I mean, that right there shows that the topographical features of this world has drastically altered. I, you know, I heard like, um, you know, temples and stuff found miles underwater. And like the only reason that would be able to be happen is if the oceans raised miles and miles above what they are now. And they weren't driving SUVs and, you know, gas guzzlers to cause this whole global warming fiasco that we're talked about now. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. And here's some of these radiums. Getting back to that radium, um, they had it in everything, everything from, you know, rubbers to radium cooking. Yeah. Where what is radium cooking? It's like a, the bowl, bowl heats itself. Yeah. So it doesn't quite. There are radium heating um kitchen elements in some of the this one right here where it's like the radium material was underneath here and it was actually like a little hot plate but they would use radium in like glass um ceramics stuff like that they would add like uh they would use it for like coloring and whatnot now when people think of radiation they you know think of the nuclear radiation um nuclear isotopes uh, there's you know right. non ionizing and ionizing right. radiation and they're two different things there's a naturally occurring radiation and there's so much of that everywhere like the world is just naturally giving off radiation really what radiation means is energy to radiate off yep. energy and that's what so, radium was going back to my comment from earlier a radium condom Okay, what does that do <laughs> well, does that like give you energy does it <laughs> I, you know, I'm not sure their um the exact uses on that. I have been trying to look into that uh, as long as as well as some other things with the radium. They even have like radium cigarettes, um, radium cigars, radium candy. Uh, wow. There's health benefits to ingesting radium. They'd have radium huh. springs, radium water springs. Um, there's this big radium bathhouse in Germany. It's just a beautiful, magnificent place where they would have like radium water springs uh yeah they wow. would like right here they're bathing in radium radium water um this is radium soap radium like water radium water was considered a big health benefit it's the same with like uh drinking out of, and using copper utensils the benefits of that over yeah. now all of our utensils, all of our cooking where is that, um, you know, that nonstick material, that forever chemical that gets in your system um, that scrapes off and can lead to cancers. It's, it's amazing how they had so much right in terms of health, but yet they say that they lived substantially less longer than us. I don't believe that either. I, I believe, don't believe that either. I believe I, we I, had I a longer that. lifespan. I believe we had a lot right. more people, a lot more real people in this world. And that's why yep. all these remote regions, all these pyramids, like the pyramids in Mexico, all these places, not only were they forgotten and abandoned, they were buried. Like what civilization right. that buried, that makes something like that lets that go to waste like that? Like Rome. Well, Rome it's over years, buried. Jake. It's over years. It just it goes like a little bit, and they don't notice. And then another little layer, quote of millimeter, and then over millions of years, you have millions of millimeters, and it gets buried. That's that's the official narrative. Right. Well, yeah. Well, like so Rome. <laughs> Rome's official narrative there was, you know, they made grand architecture, grand aqueducts that span whole cities, yet they didn't know what to do with their trash. Yeah. So in the great city of Rome, they would just dump it out in the middle of the street and that's what caused all that increase in sediment that that is the literal official narrative behind how rome was so buried and of course they tell you too rome was abandoned in the 1700s not many people know that rome and the vatican were completely abandoned like where did they go why and then we just rediscovered it and we're like hey this is a great place let's uh let's dig it out and uh, the Pope can move back into the Vatican, I guess. 
And, you know, Rad- radium. I mean, I just read this thing. Radium boot polish. Yeah, I think I need some of that radium boot polish. Make your boots really shine. That's for sure. <laughs> and and yeah, there would be a preservative here. I mean, if you look at it here on the other one, um, defects of the average boot polish are that it does not last. So radium was a lasting solution for stuff like that. Radium brand butter. They had radium in their butter. Like literally, like this is just wow. So we only hear about the radium girls painting radiated um, blow in the dark watch handles on clocks. And that's, you know, caused the crazy outcry on radiation. And that's why we needed to ban it. And that's why we needed to outlaw it. Here's radium huh. cigarettes here. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a better health choice than regular cigarettes or not personally, but I mean, well, you, you know, that tobacco is not addictive. No. Yeah. Did you read that study from Harvard? Yeah, tobacco is yeah. not a an organic tobacco. You know, when, when we hear about the Native Americans, you know, smoking their peace pipe and doing their rain dances, mm-hmm. they were doing some real stuff with that. Yeah. And and now, you know, the tobacco companies like what? You know, they brought chemists in there like, what can we put in there that's going to make it addictive? Like, oh, we'll put it in this X, Y, Z chemical. And that's the problem. And that's what's going on. Approved by our governments. Yeah. I mean, if cigarettes were and smoking was so bad for you. And they really yeah. cared about your health. The government could ban it in an instant. I right. mean, but David no. Avocado Wolf talks about uh, when you uh, smoke, you know, organic pure tobacco, that it it and you have all these um, tobacco, these um, nicotine receptors in your body, like cannabinoid receptors and nicotine receptors, and your prayers go straight to heaven, is the way he puts it. So when yeah, you're when you're it like really amplifies your your mind it, um, yeah left and right brain kind of are in a sync with one another and, higher powers yeah right and that's the thing i'm talking about with the with the population i think when we have a massive population that our collective minds um literally work together Agreed. and like like we're one giant you know brain cell connected to each other electrically like if you zoom in a brain and they show us all these neurons and stuff you know, firing in between each other, but they're really far apart from each other compared to the size that they are. So we're kind of like one giant brain. And if you have, you know, a hundred billion people, that, that's what they don't want. That's what they can't control, in my exactly. opinion. No, you're and, exactly right. That's why when they and, say, well, what's the point of lying about this or that? It's they want us in the dark, a population yeah that is unaware of their true past, unaware of their right. true capabilities are that much easier to control. Right. And they don't, and they, they want the population down. They do it through the thing they stick in your arm. They do it through poisons. They do it through wars and they do it through chemtrail worrying chemtrails. And they do it through worrying about paying for college. That mm-hmm. is the number one reason why people don't have kids or more kids because they're worried about college, which is yeah. a scam. Oh yeah, honestly. I mean, yeah. Yeah. like my wife, she just got, you know, I'm in you know, early thirties. My wife just completed college. Um, she went originally her four year degree for um, psychology. And then she realized the scam that everywhere required you to have not only that four year degree, but experience with that four year degree. So what the heck yeah. is she gonna do with that? So then she um, cited, you know, a couple of years kind of contemplated internally. And she thought, you know, her real passion is teaching people and helping people out. So she went to school to become a teacher. And, you know, she just got done with that. I mean, thankfully, there's some, you know, perks in becoming a teacher. You'll get some of that college debt paid off for it. But I mean, yeah, we'll be paying that off for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years easily. Yeah, that's, it's all about control, all, all about controlling people. And you had the most beautiful architecture made by people who didn't even complete grade school comparatively. And now we have. Think about people that go to school for history. If they're watching this, they just learn more about our history than they will learn in school in four years. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Our true history. Our true history is not what they tell us. The opposite of what they tell us. Indeed. Indeed. I hope that I hope I kind of helped explain that to your uh, your audience here as well how much things from airships, radium, uh, boy, there's always so much more we can 
we can cover here, Dave. I mean, we, I got. We can go, let's go. We don't. We don't have to end. It. We can go a little longer. Oh yeah, go. I got. All, I got all the time, man. I got all the time. Here's a radium heater right here. Um, you know, show for your god radium. And this is just a radium fireplace. It's why you see these old world fireplaces adorned in beautiful marble, beautiful hand carved wood. You would never burn a fire in that. You could never get that smoke sucked out. Yep. That's, they weren't used for fire. They were used for things like radium, mercury. Have you come across any of these devices that like oh, actual devices that people have from the past? I've seen some interesting stuff like as terms of like old world, like ether technology, people have came across um you know, pieces of, I, I guess I can say like unknown tech from that time attached to these towers and belfries. And, you know, you look at it and you kind of, from an inch, from breaking it down from an engineering standpoint, it does look like it's some kind of energy gathering device with, you know, like some mercury or red mercury use in there. Um, and that's the problem with it. You know, we really, what we have is just bits and pieces of the past. And sure. what we're trying to do is trying to get as big of a picture as we can while constantly battling the mainstream narrative. Um, so somebody like Graham Hancock, who, you know, he, he is one of his big things is Gobekli Tepe. And he talks about, you know, how grand it was and how amazing it was that it was built, but he's got the wrong narrative. And then he says, then after they built it, they buried it. Yeah. They didn't bury it. It got mud flooded, it right? It got mud flooded, that, exactly, right. Mud, you know, that that's like burying a city. I mean, it, it's like you can't, you can't, they buried it. It it got buried in a mud flood. Yes, exactly. Graham Hancock, I like a lot of stuff he uh, does. I've seen his like uh, documentary on uh, Netflix. I, I think he's honest in what he believes. He's completely wrong on much of it. And yeah. He says there's no giants. Like he was in one of the episodes I watched, like he was saying about yeah. how these ancient people were talking about giants helping him, them build these megalithic yeah. structures. You know, he would talk about all this proof being presented and then he would turn around in the same breath and say, but of course they weren't talking about actual giants. Giants didn't exist. And, and, and when people see pictures like this of giants, these are the small giants, right? Those are the last versions of giants. Absolutely right. Yeah. Those are just the little mini giants that we have. Um, yeah, that's like when the last couple hundred years when we still had, you know, photography or cameras, or at least cameras that we would uh, be allowed to know about. So I say a lot of these pictures and stuff, do we really know how old they are? They, they might come with a date on them. They might say, oh, yeah, this is from, uh, you know, 1899. But could it have been from 200, 300, 400 years ago? They just give us these bits and pieces and tell us the dates and tell us the information about them. And yeah, and these are, again, just the last versions of the giants. Last couple hundred years where there were, you know, about seven, eight foot, nine foot. And they were worldwide. Again, it's not just a few instances of giants. They served a lot of giants you'll see in military. Military yep. guard, like this guy here, a couple of ones I showed previously. You know, I think they worked, you know, it's, it's like anything else. People ask me, were giants good? Were giants bad? I think it's just like the same question when you ask about humans. There are good humans, there are bad humans, and there are ones in between. You and I both know that, you know, black and white, it's nothing in this world is black and white. I, you know, they were, they lived and shared this world with us. There were some bad giants, there were some good giants, and there were some giants that were just, you know, out of the way from us. And I believe they are still out there. I think that we had a falling out with them. Perhaps the controllers, my theory on that is after the reset, you know, their population took a big hit. Our population took a big hit. But we're, you know, one thing about, you know, smaller species and just, you know, the animal kingdom side of things is they tend to be a more adaptable to surviving harsh environments and harsh situations. 
So say 200 years ago, the mud flood happened, wiped out our populations. We were able to hold off and stave off more. We had larger numbers. The giants were completely decimated, completely taken off guard. And that's where us, not necessarily us collectively as humans, but those who control our strings, that pull our strings from behind the scenes, they went to war with them, wiped out the remaining giants. And then the ones still Amazing. around went to seclusion, went to hiding, went beyond the ice walls. That's why the U.S. government has great in the pictures what you're talking them. I should just put this on a like a slideshow here. There we go. There we go. There you go. That's why the U.S. government has strange interests in the Nephilim. You can go look in the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, then Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton um, had email correspondence about uh, giants and Nephilim in Iraq. When right. You look at the whole reason why we went to the Middle East, you know, Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, all of these supposed dictators, that's just what the Western media tells us is they're just evil dictators, right. supposedly had hidden technology, hidden connections to giants and the Nephilim. Um, supposedly Saddam Hussein found a working Stargate. Um, and of course, we couldn't have any country have, have you know, more advanced technology than ours. Oh, no, no, no. There's always the joke about the U.S. and oil. I mean, if people realize the real technology that drives what's behind the scenes, oil is nothing to us. I, Just our, pause that picture for a second. Go, go back one picture. So just this one? look at those blocks. Exactly. I don't care if they were cut. It had, like, who put those there? They had how, be, how is that even possible? They had to be sourced, and it wasn't local. You find these quarries. They're miles and miles away from these megalithic build sites. So yep. they had to be quarried. They had to be traveled and traversed and then shaped perfectly. So you can't even put a razor blade in between these gaps. This is totally different technology as far as quarrying, transporting, building, it totally, we're, we have no idea how they did it. We just know they didn't do it the way that we would try and do it. it because we couldn't try and do it today. I mean, no. we really can't build something this megalithic, even with all of our cranes and our heavy machinery. Like, I, these are I, thousand ton, tons, hundred tons blocks. Like, this is just me theorizing, speculating, not claiming this is the way it is. But sometimes I think when the creator created this world, he threw down some amazing infrastructure for us to live in. Why just create people and to go here, go good luck in the caves. Hope you figure out how to make a power drill one day. Right. I think, I think, <laughs> I think that the creator took the raw materials and created kingdoms for us. Actually, Possibly. An idea. It actually talks just about that to back it up. <clears throat> in a religious text of about, you know, angels, uh, fallen angels came and built all this these monuments and structures and stuff. And then they, you know, they, uh, bred with, uh, they bred with us. I, humans. Saw, I wish I had saved it. Somebody sent me an old cartoon where these, I think it was like a fallen angel, you know, created a kingdom. It's a swipe of an arm and, and all this stuff happened. And then I remember as kids, there was all these cartoons about giants turning into stone mm -hmm. and show the pictures, you know, the sleeping giant and all, all of these, uh, these stuff. And, you know, and I'm aware of what pareidolia is, and some of them, not that not necessarily the ones that you show, but there's plenty that are could be pareidolia, oh, yeah. you know, and oh, yeah. and but but you're like, you know, the one of the sleeping giant, it looks amazing, but like, how did they just stay there? Well, going back to what I said at the beginning in uh, Alcapoco with the frog that turned into stone in a, in lid, mid mid leap, if there mm -hmm. was some sort of event that turned things into stone liquefied everything it you just where you are is where you are and then it then that's what it is exactly now if you go to um let's do a couple of those and make make them bigger as you do yeah absolutely let me get a slideshow this here yeah there we go 
So there's actually, if you go on uh, the CIA's website, uh, type in Gilgamesh, um, you'll pull up the story, the Adam and Eve story, which is a book written by this doctor. And um, it basically talks about a reset, um, about how two mile wide wall of water comes after a big giant, you know, cataclysmic event and just wipes out the world. And now think of like a two mile high wave that is going at nearly the speed of sound. Not only it's over with. Yeah. Not only do you have the water to worry about as, and in the book, I recommend anyone just going to CIA.gov, go to freedom of information act. And, um, Let's see if I can yeah, actually right here. And then just type in Gilgamesh and you'll see this whole book that's just really weirdly, for one, it doesn't say anything about Gilgamesh. It's like it's almost was put in here inadvertently. And anyone can do it. You don't even need an account for this here. The Adam and Eve story. It's a book by uh, Dr. Chan Thomas here. And it just talks all about the passions, the pearl, perils of nationhood, um, the nuke fluke. And it goes into just these really bizarre stories. The next cataclysm, the great floods, the story, the event, Genesis, the conclusion, like Noah's flood every 6,500 years, like Adam and Eve 11,000 years ago, this too will come to pass. So this book does not even start off as being portrayed as a work of fiction. It's basically talking about, you know, reset events um, and this will happen with the rumble so low and inaudible. And really like the more you go into it, like they talk about actual points like Pike's Peak was like some of the only places safe from this reset. People on the side of Pike's Peak, high enough from the wall of water and able to block the wind, the westerly wind, because that wave that'll come will also bring, like I said, a near supersonic wind with it. That's why look at the forest. Why do we have no ancient forest? Most of our forests are about, say about 150, 200 years old. I showed a really great picture of Siberia here um, about a hundred years ago with absolutely no trees. 100 years later, that same peak, that same mountain range in Siberia, completely covered in forest. What changed? A reset. That's what changed. Hmm. The great floods. I mean, really, it's just a really odd out of place book here talking all about um, like specifics here. Specifics about what to expect in this flood. It's almost like a prediction of what what to what's to come here but yeah cia freedom of information act give it a check out there read that it's a really good read it's only about 50 pages so it's really not that deep but it will have the hair on the back of your neck standing up the whole time i swear amen so um go ahead go finish up there um I kind of lost my train of thought there, actually. No, <laughs> go ahead, Dave. Go ahead. I ask you, to be, to, we're going to wrap it up pretty soon. Yeah. But um, show me your favorite um, old world mud flood building photos. You have a, a favorites folder? Oh, yeah. I got thousands two- of pictures here. This is, um. see how I have it all sorted out, basically, just by category right here, if you can see them. Um, in terms of mud flood, oh, I got quite a few great pictures like here amazing- ones that did it for me here's the ones that really did it for me on the mud flood the easter island heads make that bigger now we were always told of the easter island heads just the heads not the easter island bodies well they started to decide you know a couple decades ago let's let's try and dig let's see what's uh let's see if there's anything else under these heads whole bodies whole bodies whole bodies now i just lost that here we go there we go there we go yeah that one got me when i entire bodies now this this is yeah when i first heard about the mud flood theory as many with you know critical 
thought or not would think, oh, well, that's complete hogwash. You, and then when you start looking into some of these things that, you know, people like John Levi, people like me say, um, and you see that, no, we're not just pulling your chain. Like there's no reason why I wake up every day to get called a retard 50 times plus in the comment sections by these NPCs or whatever you want to call them that tell me I don't know history. Like, it's not that I'm just making this up just for the gas or just for the laughs. I mean, I used to be a big, big mainstream history buff. Like, I, I loved mainstream history, like, you know, war history, all that stuff. Like, I was a big study on that. So part of the thing for me personally was to kind of accept my own indoctrination, get past my own indoctrination. And those Easter Island heads really did it for me. I mean, there's no mainstream explanation for them. They can't even, I remember watching a documentary in high school once about them, how they were trying to describe how they got the heads from one end of Easter Island all the way to the other. Because that's, again, same kind they of wobbled. setup. They had oh, quarry and rock. Wobbled. Yep. Yeah, they, they, they wobbled like, it over. With ropes and stuff, but that never took into effect this whole dang yep. body that they just buried underneath it all. Yeah. And look, at even in this in this one, you can see some evidence of the mud flood. Like, look at this little cylinder-looking shaped rock right here. These little archways. These look all carved. Right. And one of the things that you see here, the more you kind of dig in, I guess you can say, is it's not just the mud flood. Mud flood's a great eye opener catch. What really kind of keeps me fresh almost daily is like these edited, deliberate edits of our skies, deliberate edits of these old world pictures. I saw recently you were showing some of that because this one probably that, uh, that, the skies are just whited out. But then when you show something like that, that's a horrible edit. Yeah. Look at this. I mean, this isn't leaves on the tree or anything. I mean, all the way down to the bottom, you can see the different coloring, the different tones all the way on the side. Yep. No, it's not just that picture. I mean, and from you or from somebody else that they said all of the pictures of the civil from the civil war are from one family. I haven't heard that. And when, no. you, when you look at these pictures from the Civil War of the soldiers and everything, they look AI generated to me. No, that's what I think. It's um, a lot of it is AI generated altered images. Um, scenes shot from like a green screen or a, a sound stage, um, right. like those scenes at the beach. Um, and then Jake, you you know you've seen the pictures where they say that um like people like Nicolas Cage and Eddie Murphy they had uh, the an identical twin you know from, yep. from well I think these guys are just took these pictures and faked it and said and they're like we're going to make these old pictures and we're going to use these actors to make these old pictures no that's exactly what I think happened too um there are a lot of scenes of just outright like looking like actors taking shots taking scenes in these uh, American Civil War photos especially. Here's one. Um, speaking of American Civil War, this is a uh, picture of the a medical scene here. This is a medical uh, ambulance. Yeah. Just look at the people. So none of them look dirty. They're just looking very laying and posed. This guy who's supposed to be wounded. He's got his hand up there. He's looking right at the camera. This guy is just looking right at the camera. Everybody's just kind of staring and posing. Nobody looks dirty or like Warm. This guy, the, the guy on the on, on the far left on the ground, he's just taking a nap. Exactly, he's just like arms stretched yeah. out. I mean, chilling. This guy with his little sword, he just looks like he's posing for like Vogue or something, you know? Like, yeah. and officially with the um, Civil War too, they they admit that they were staged photos. Well, they had to be because of this and that or whatever. But they had a cameraman follow along all these battalions in an America's most bloodiest and you know nastiest war with the loss biggest loss of life they made sure to take all these random weird posed pictures it's like oh I know you guys are about ready to go off to Gettysburg but hey let's all like 
get around and pose and really weird pictures and act like you're injured, you know, for, for prosperity, for posterity here to, you know, seal the moment. I mean, and these are scenes and like rich men and stuff like that, where they say cannonballs did all of this. Look at the overgrowth in some of these pictures. I did a YouTube video on this um, a couple weeks back, really kind of, you see some of these scenes from the American civil war and it looks like, you know, directed energy weapons or massive carpet bombings, not cannonballs. When, like, I, when I grew up, I live in uh, Connecticut right next to New York. And I w- we would go into Brooklyn, not Brooklyn, the Bronx. Mm-hmm. It looked like that. It looked like yes. that picture was going. And I'm yeah. like, and I'm like, what happened here? Yeah. You look at, um, I was blown away. John Levi actually did a really good video. I don't know if you know who he is. He's a great Levi. YouTuber. John, yeah, Levi. John Levi. Yep. Um, he did a really good video on that a couple of years back. I seen um, just looking at like old New York pictures from like the eighties of the Bronx yeah. and stuff like that. And it looked just like the exactly right. Just like this, like a war zone. Crazy. It, it's crazy. We can, we can talk about this for hours and hours and hours. I'm going to, I'm going to just pop you back on the screen here. Um, for, for, you know, on, on my app, if you go to the homeschool page, mm-hmm. I have, oops. It's not loading because I have a test version on here. Let's go homeschool page, and of course, oh, it's it doesn't want to load for me, but now it'll load. We're doing a I'm doing a little testing here. So on the homeschool page, I've got you right here. So anyone awesome. that wants to find Jake, you can find him here. This goes to his. I think it just goes to your Instagram, but then you you have all your other yep. stuff on there. Short short clips, tons like mind blowing. And then I have my lunch break over here. You gotta, you gotta start watching him. Watch his yes. Milwaukee stuff. John Levi over mm-hmm. here. So between these three corners, we've got some amazing, amazing, you know, old world stuff. That rabbit hole is so deep, it's uh, bottomless. You'll and never hit go the hours and hours. Absolutely. And I'm always down to do another uh, show. Come back for another hour and talk about some more. I, I mean, you see all the files of photos I have. I have endless amounts of stuff to talk about here. Let's do this every couple of weeks. You know, do, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll just do this and uh, and uh, figure out what the hell happened. I'm down. Yeah. I know. I know my audience loves when we get together. Uh, they'll definitely be happy with this video. I think. But yeah, next couple of weeks we'll get together and do another on part three. A hundred percent. So, uh, Jake, tell everybody for my audience where they can find you. It's Jay, I'm the Improbable Dreamer. That's your Instagram, but you have another one. It's the Doctor. What is it? Yep. I kind of got a couple different names, but uh, you'll find most, if you find the improbable dreamer, you can hit the link tree in my bio there on Instagram. It'll take you to all my sites. I'm on uh, the doctor regenerated on TikTok, the improbable dreamer on YouTube. Um, I'm pretty much on all social media is my telegram page, the doctor regenerated chat. Well, if they just remember, I'm the improbable dreamer, or if you have my app, just go to the homeschool section, top right corner and watch his stuff. It's, and know what I like about you? I'll tell you what I like about you is you don't go, this is why it happened. And this is exactly when it happened. And this is, you know, you're, you're just like, look at this. Look, exactly. <laughs> this is what didn't happen. Exactly. And we're trying to figure out the rest. So, you know, uh, for if I were, you know, when, um, when I show something that's just obvious and I get the haters, I don't even finish reading the statement banned, banned, Ben, I, my subs would be so much higher. I, I ban more. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Feel that. I feel yes. that. Don't let the haters uh, suck your energy down. Cause that's what they're here for. Amen. Amen. David, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate you uh, chatting with me. And for those that don't know me, flat learn about the flat earth, learn about everything else. Choke it to death again. And um, flat That's where you find all my stuff. Yes, sir. Have a great night, friends. And until next time, question everything. All right, man. Thanks. Take it easy. Bye-bye.